Folks, I have sat on that front pew and I have argued with God. I want to obey the Lord, don't you? Yeah. I want to obey. And the Lord just spoke to my heart that before I preach, I need to give an invitation. I believe God's already in this place. Amen? Amen. He's moving. And so uh, I want to obey God. I don't want to disobey Him. And so I'm going to ask you if you will, just bow your heads. I'm going to just say to you, if you don't know for sure, if you were to die, that you'd be with God in heaven. I'm going to ask you, let me lead you in a prayer right where you're at. And you call upon the Lord and ask Him to forgive you of your sin. And ask Christ to come to your life to save you. You're saying the words won't save you. You must need it from your life. So I want to encourage you, if you don't know for sure, and you sense the Spirit of God already moving in your heart right now, and you say, Preacher, I need to get this thing set. This is something I've struggled with, I've wrestled with for a long time. And I need to get it settled right here tonight before we go any further in this service. Let me just lead you in a prayer about where you're at as a youngster, a teenager, an adult, church member, whoever you are. You don't know for sure that you're saved. If you died right now, you'd be with God in heaven. Let me lead you in a prayer right now. Pray with me. Dear God, I know you love me. I know Jesus died for me on the cross. I know he came out of that grave and he's alive. God, I've sinned against you and I'm lost. I cannot save myself. God, forgive me of all my sin. Jesus, come in my heart right now and save my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I'm going to live for you rest of my life. And I want to ask if you ask Jesus to save you the best you knew how just then and you really meant it. I want to ask you as I've asked you in the other services if you will just look up here at me for a moment. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. But look up here at me. Sweetheart, you pray that prayer? It's not you yet. You pray that prayer? God bless you. Sweetheart, you pray that prayer? Amen. Over here, sweetheart, you pray that prayer? Young man, did you pray that prayer? Young man, did you pray that prayer? Okay. Back here in the back, sir, did you pray that prayer? God bless you. Now those of you who prayed the prayer, look up at me just for a moment. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I promise you that. I want to ask you three questions. Same question I've asked in the other services. You know God loves you. You know God loves you. Sweetheart, you know God loves you. Young man, you know God loves you. Sir, do you know God loves you? The Bible says, for God to love the world, that means God loves you, He really does. And ask you a second question. You know Christ died for you on the cross? You know Jesus died for you? Sir, you know Jesus died for you? Young men, you know Jesus died for you? You know Jesus died for you? The Bible says that Christ died for our sins. That means you're so special. You're so special. If you'd been the only person, He'd have died just for you. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? You're that special. Now let me ask you a third question. It's real important. You're not ashamed of Jesus, are you? You're not ashamed of him, are you? Sir, you're not ashamed of him, are you? Sweetheart, you're not ashamed of him, are you? Listen, Jesus is not ashamed of you. He went to that cross and he openly, publicly died there for you. And I'm going to ask you to do something. The pastor's going to come stand right here right front right now. And I'm going to ask every one of you that asked Jesus to come to your heart, just think. I'm going to ask you if you will to stand up in a moment walk right here in front of the preacher. And by you coming, you're saying, I'm not ashamed of Christ. But I'm going to give a speech. I promise you that, okay? All he's going to do is just have a word of prayer with you. And by you coming, you're saying, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. You're not ashamed of him, are you? You're not ashamed of Jesus, are you? Sir, you're not ashamed of him. Sweetheart, you're not ashamed of him, are you? I'm going to ask every one of you to trust in Christ. Just come on, right now, real quick. All right, hey, out the back. Come on, come on, real quick. Walk right here to the preacher. Come on. You stand up. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come. Come on, sweetheart. Come. Did you mean it? Come on. Come. Come on. Let's walk right here to the preacher. Amen. 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 Now you may be here and you've not yet made that decision, but you need to make it. Or you may be here tonight and you say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I know if I were to die, I'd be with God in heaven. But I sense God speaking in my heart right now, and I need to get serious about living for God. And as a Christian, I want to get some things right with God. 
Listen, this altar is open for you. Listen, the time to respond is while the Spirit of God's moving. The Spirit of God's in this place. Amen? Amen. God's moving. And the time for you to respond is to come now. Listen, God's going to do an unusual, special work here tonight. And so I want to encourage you to come. You come right now. Pastor's going to pray for these here at the front. And there's others that need to come. And I'm going to encourage you to come. Let's stand. Let's begin to sing. Others need to come. Come on. Step on out real quick. Come on. Come on. Real quick. Come. Come on. Come. Come. Others need to come. Come. God's moving and speaking to your heart right now. Come on. You come. Come on. Come on. Quickly. Come on. Okay. Here's someone else. Come on. Come. 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 Step on out. Come. 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 The altar is open. You come. The Spirit of God is moving. You come. 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 Step out. Come. Anyone else come? Come. Obey God. You come. Amen. Look up here just for a moment. How many of you would say, I'm here tonight. I do sense God speaking. I need prayer. I'm going through some tough times in my life. Listen, God wants to meet your need. Amen? So if you're here tonight, whatever it is, you say, I just need someone to pray with me, pray for me. This installer is going to be open for you to come. You step on out. As a young person, as a adult, you come. If you've got a burden on your heart, you say, I need prayer. I need someone to pray with me, pray for me. You come on. You come. Let's sing. Come on. Come. 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 How about it? Come. Be honest about it. Come on. Amen. Okay. Come on. Others. Come. Come on. Come. Maybe someone wants to come and pray with her. You step on out real quick. Let's go pray with someone. Quick. Come on. Come on. Come. Come on. Come. Come on. Others need to come. 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 Come on. Come. Step on out. Come.
one of the about this I don't believe. God works in mysterious ways. Amen. 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 Tell Brother James, I need to get up here and formally give my testimony tonight. And by this right here, him, him doing this beforehand, it, it, the devil been biting me all day about doing this. I said, I ain't going to let it happen today. Many in this church have known me all my life. Started coming here, I don't know, Junior would probably tell you what, six, seven year old maybe? Yeah. A long time. I grew up in this church. My dad, stepmother, got me coming here. At the age of 12, I was in a revival service at Shiloh Baptist Church in Bradford, Tennessee. One night, the pastor was preaching. Preaching about hell, going to hell if you're not saved. <clears throat> Here I am, a 12 year old kid, saw my cousins and some other kids going down. I went down, said my prayer, stood up in front of that church, came to this church, stood in front of this church, and told everybody that I was saved at that church over there and I was baptized. Join the church. bear with me. didn't know how I was going to get through this. The devil's been trying to tell me not to. I never told anybody this. At the age of 18, Brother Walter, I was in his class. He was teaching my Sunday school class downstairs. 16, 21 year olds, right? Same age it still is today. 16 to 21 year old. At 18, Brother Walter saw something in me and asked me to teach as an assistant teacher for him. An 18 year old teaching my own peers. That's intimidating. <laughs> Some of them are older than me. Same age. I don't know if anyone's older than me. Same age, a little younger. Some of them were family. So I started teaching a few years later. I believe I became an usher, assistant Sunday school superintendent here at this church. You look at me and you think I've been pretty obedient, right? I thought so too. I tried to study the Bible the best I could to teach. I don't know it all. I know what I read. I know what I believe. I know what I was taught. What I've learned. I teach these kids about being obedient every Sunday. Doing what God tells you to do. Now I hadn't been doing it. And I'll tell you why. It wasn't until I was in my 20s that I realized that when I went down at 12 year old and I just said a prayer that, that, that saved me. I didn't realize that. No, I didn't. Because I didn't. I wasn't convicted of it. I didn't feel it in my heart that the Lord was telling me to do that. I went down with a bunch of kids, as many people as done. I'm not talking just to kids, adults, whoever it may be. A lot of people have done this. I've never made that public until now. You want to know why? Kids, you want to know why? Why do you think I, I put it off this long? Yeah. Pride. I was too proud because I didn't want people to look at me in a different way. I felt like I would disappoint a lot of people. I figured I'd disappoint this church if I because I put it off. And I put it off. The more I put it off, the easier it got. But I figured coming forward and 
doing that, I just I felt like I'd be disappointing a lot of people. This church, my dad. I didn't want to disappoint my dad. I disappointed him enough in my life. I didn't want to disappoint him. Like I'd been fronting this whole time, like it was a fake. I just didn't know. I said all that to say this. You've got a decision to make, and you make it tonight, or whenever it is, don't put it off 10, 15 years. Down. Don't wait till you're nearly 40 to come and do it, because this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. It's hard to stand up here and feel the shame that I felt. But I realized today, after your message last night, Brother John, I appreciate you for preaching with your boldness. Brother James preaches every Sunday. Boldness and truth. You said something last night, and I can't put it in the exact words you did. I fully knew I was saved last night. But you said something about not taking the step, how it would affect others. Something along that line? You hinder others when you don't obey. When you don't take that step. <clears throat> that got to working on me hard at work today. Very hard. I was standing there working, and that's all I could think about. I said, God, I've not been obedient to you. You know, I've had many of prayers in my life that has gone unanswered. Or they got answered in a way I didn't, didn't realize it. God will get a hold of me, and when He does, you'll know it. He got a hold of me today. I got home to this afternoon. First thing I did when I got home, took off my work clothes. I sat there in bed, got got out my Bible, started reading, reading it, reading up on people that had disappointed and obeyed God all their life or in their lives. You look at people like. Jonah, Peter, Paul, David, all of them disobeyed, but God loved them. They repented. I had these in order. I got these verses wrote down because they was really important to me tonight. I wonder why it took this long for God to really get a hold of me tonight. I kind of got the thing out. I mean, it, I can't explain it. Why? But I think that's something to do with a lot of these kids now, being youth night. I think that's part of it. Maybe not. Maybe it's for everybody. I read a verse in uh, 2 Peter 3 9 that he is long suffering that any should perish and that all should come to repentance. Like he put it, put it, let me go this long. <clears throat> Maybe he didn't answer some of my prayers because he is going to discipline those who backslide to get their attention. So God rejected Saul for his disobedience. So I sat down, I was reading his verses. And I seen that he would, he's going to forgive me for where I backslid and not been obedient. Yes, I, I try my best to do it. Uh, doing all these good things. And yes, I try to put others first. And I do study, I do pray with God every day. He said, I will hear their backs or heal their backslidings and I will love them for you. Yes. He says, There is forgiveness of sins for all who turn to me. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. These verses right here, they really touched me today. I got done reading. I got down by the bed and I prayed to God. I said, Lord, thank Him for who He is, for His forgiveness, for saving me a while back, Lord, and for uh, I asked Him to forgive me for not being obedient with coming forward sooner about this because the longer, the longer you wait, the longer or the harder it is 
to do it. It's hard. All these kids there that I teach every Sunday, I ask God to forgive me. I ask y'all to forgive me. It's church. If I've let you down anyway, I ask forgiveness for that. I just want to make God proud now. I'm tired of this. I don't want to disappoint God. That's so if I got anything, get anything out of this, if you make a decision, don't let pride keep you from walking up here and making that decision. Don't worry about what everybody else is going to think because that's what I've done. For all these years, I've worried about what everybody else is going to say or think of me. Not anymore. I rededicate, rededicate my life this afternoon. One hundred percent for God. I want y'all to pray for me. here tonight. You're exactly in the same condition. So I'm going to ask you if you will again. Let's just bow our heads. We're, we're not on an agenda. We're on God's agenda. Amen? Amen. We just want to do what God wants. And I know you came here. So I want to hear a preacher preach, but I want to see God move. Amen. More than preaching, I want to see God move. And we want to be obedient. I want to see some more people come to Christ. And there's other people here tonight. You're, you're exactly where He was. You've gone through a decision, but you've never really got it settled. You don't know for sure that you've really been saved. Leave your pride in the dust. Let in the dust. Nothing is worth going to hell over. Amen. Nothing is worth missing heaven over. God loves you so much. Christ died for you. <coughs> Come to Him tonight to get it settled. Or you may be here tonight and you'd say it. I've just been playing games. I need to get serious about living for God. I want to be a real witness at school or at work in my family. I want to get serious about living for God. God's speaking my heart right now. <coughs> Bow our heads and close our eyes. I wonder if there'd be anyone else. I believe there's many of us. If you were to be honest, you'd say, Preacher, God's speaking my heart right now. As a teenager, as a youngster, as an adult, church member, you say, Preacher, God's really moving my heart right now. Just pray for me. I'll get this thing right. Just put your hand up. Put it right back down. Right up, right back down. Say, preacher. Okay. Okay. Others. Come on, be honest. Others. Be honest about it. Anyone else? Right up, right back down. Okay. Okay. Now here's the thing I want to ask you. Those of you lift your hand, look up here at me. Are you really serious? You really mean it? Do you mean it? Do you mean it? You look up here at me. Did you mean it? We're going to sing. The preacher's going to be standing at the front. I'm going to ask you to come make your way to the preacher. Will you do it? Come on. Real quick. Come on. Mothers need to come. Real quick. Come on. Come. Anyone else? Come on. Real quick. Real quick. Come on. Preacher's going to pray with you. Share with you. Others need to come. Let's sing. You come. Come on. Come on. How about it? Come. someone else, you've got, a, you've got a word testimony. I mean, God's spoken to you. You can just get some things right God and just say, listen, God's doing something in my life right now. I just need to give a word of testimony. You'll, you'll speak up real quiet, real quick. Anyone at all? Anyone at all? Don't be shy. Anyone at all? Anyone at all? Anyone at all? 
thank you for saving my soul. Amen. Amen. I was 21 years old. I've sung a lot of years, and I've stopped, basically. When I come forward a minute ago, I told him I was going to change that. Amen. 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 Someone else? Don't be ashamed of Jesus. I mean, listen. He's done something good in your life. Give him honor. Amen. You done anything good in your life? Amen. Give him honor. Anyone else? Lord for saving me, and I thank you for using me in the situation that I'm at at the school house. Yeah. Amen. There, there's a lot of times that you don't realize what these students are going through, even at home. And to come to school and they're having, I mean, they're just having the worst day in life. Yeah. And you mentioned something about, oh, I like that shirt. Well, this is I I've had this, I, I still like it. And that's how we connect when we get to talk of them and we'll be able to counsel them. And actually, if they initiate it, we can talk about God. Yeah. <laughs> I just thank God that He's using. Me, not because of me, but because of him, to, to be able to, to try to reach this Amen. Okay. Amen. Anyone else? God's done something good. You want to get him on. Anyone else? Any teenager? God done anything good in your life? Anyone else? Your, I mean, your authority, I'm ready to preach. If they want to sit here or we can do it tomorrow night, what do you want me to do? Let's, uh, let's I'm have ready. another verse here of invitation. And then if, uh, if you don't move or you won't move but then, we'll call it a night and, and we'll celebrate what God's done already. Does that sound good? All right, so here's your opportunity as we sing. One more verse here. <laughs> Sunday morning in the services, and I went by their house Sunday afternoon and talked with her, and so she comes tonight and want to make it public that she's been saved. She wants to follow the Lord believers' baptism tonight with Bethel, so what's the desire of the church tonight? Right, motion. motion made to hear a second. 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 All right, all those in favor of that, we'll raise your right hand, Amen. so you've been family. Any opposed, raise your right hand, and there is none. All right, yeah. come on over here, sister. Yeah. All right, Jeremy, come on up here. You heard Jeremy's testimony. Jeremy's been saved since his uh, baptism, so he wants to follow the Lord's believer's baptism. And uh, you're not here with our church, so what's the desire of the church tonight? Motion made here, second. second. 
Okay. All right. All those in favor of that will raise your right hand. Any opposed, raise your right hand. All right. Shelby's family, y'all from Shelby's family. Jaylee's family, come on up here. Jeremy, you stay up here. Y'all come by and give them the right hand of fellowship. I'll tell you what, Ava and Lindsay, y'all don't mind getting hugged and, and all that. Y'all want to join up here tonight? You, well, it's up to you. It's up to you. You don't have to. But uh, these folks would like to celebrate with you, okay? Miss Susie George, come and stay with Ava. All right. So we want to celebrate what God has done tonight. So we just miss here in just a moment. I want you to come by and congratulate these who have been saved, and these others who have made decisions. And uh, so let's, uh, we'll be dismissed. Is there anything anybody before we dismiss tonight? Don't forget tomorrow night is the final service. We encourage you to. I'll be here tomorrow night at 7, okay? One more point. Okay. Another thing you said last night really got me about having family members or co-workers or friends or whatever they that might be lost. Again, I prayed about that last night. I've got a brother and a sister, and many of y'all don't know, from my mom's side. Neither one of them are in church. My brother's married, kids. None of them are in church. <coughs> I've invited them. I hope it, I'm hoping they'll try to come tomorrow night. Just pray for them. They're, they're not in church. They're not saved. And it's really, that's something else that's been bothering me. I tried to talk to them before without success. But once again, I, I wasn't being fully obedient before, so maybe, <coughs> maybe those prayers will be answered. We all probably got somebody we know, family members, friends, places we need to be friends with. So, right. Anything else before we dismiss tonight? Let's say it again. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. All right. Brother Judy Gibson, we dismiss this night. Brother Don, we'll be out before you.